the title is uh, so demanding, Steam and Beyond. My goodness. Uh, uh, so uh, what, what is the, the World Academy Steam and Beyond Working Group mission? In the sense that we started with uh, STEM to STEAM, and now, uh, after long debating about uh, STEM and STEAM, uh, we are ready for a quantum leap and uh, going to from STEAM and beyond. And, uh, and so we have to try to use our imagination to develop a new model for scientific learning, leadership, and collective, collaborative and con a con uh, collab uh, collaboration and competition. Uh, but uh, by a practical point of view, and that's the reason uh, uh, our questions are really uh, very practical because uh, uh, we are looking for a way uh, to find a solution how to put to ground all the theories, all the thinking that we had in the past. But, and then at the same time, try to put that, those in the ground as soon as possible. Taking into account that, uh, un unfortunately, we have to work mainly on young people, on fresh minds, but to take advantage of the current uh, people that are on, on the road. And so we need to develop a teaching to learn for our coevolution evolutionary living. And evolutionary living that uh, is the only key we have to regenerate our values in the future. And so I think uh, that uh, uh, with these lines, uh, I pass uh, the, the, the floor to Guido that uh, we go into uh, more detail for a few points. Please, Guido. Thank you very much, uh, Rodolfo. Welcome again, everyone. Uh, it is a pleasure to actually see your faces and uh, hear your voices um, for uh, the nth time now. But I think we will probably require M times to actually reach what Rodolfo um, is dreaming about, or we are dreaming about. It is um, moving, expanding the whole concept of learning, education and learning, and then education and learning to live in a way that we forgot to how to where we want to really transform into being humans, or if we cannot do that within our span to become or to uh, evolve into, into that. But we are also teachers. So we can't create that new generation of people who will do all of that and will uh, realize that our dreams, but to show how we could become once together not the young generation against the old, but all of us living under one umbrella in that pale uh, blue dot, a very fragile, but still so powerful, so enormously, um, with, with tr such an enormous potential. But in order to achieve it, we need transformational, um, revolutionary type of changes. So adding arts defined over here as humanities in the broader sense, not drawing new pictures, but uh, uh, weaving, interweaving all of the activities from the past and the present into the potential of the future. So our grandchildren could have a future and could dream our dreams, but in a way that far exceed ours. For that, we need the new Sputnik moments. Remember the Sputnik one. Some, some of you may not, <laughs> but I do. I live it today, every second of it. When I heard the sounds, I, I'm a ham radio operator too. I spend lots of time in space and on the ground. When I heard that sound, 
I knew something special happened. When I looked at my colleagues, all of them smiled. They knew that something special happened. Uh, I think this conference, your talks, your contributions might lead those little steps into that vastness of space, the vastness of possibilities, and the vastness of potential that each and every person carries within her and him on, on them. Uh, it, is, it is that treasure and the opportunity that we have walking on this planet and being together, dreaming together, that that step could really happen sooner than later. Thank you, um, Rodolfo. Thank you, Widdle. Uh, uh, first, uh, uh, I, I tell uh, the first question that is, uh, what problem of education and knowledge are you trying to solve by the, the World Academy's team and beyond approach? Okay, so the second question is, uh, how can we reimagine an education and learning framework embedded in co-evolutionary -evol living in the present? such that our current actions regenerate value into the future? And that third question, how do we take this mindset shift from STEM to STEAM and beyond into the corporate and investment worlds so that the transition in action begins now? Peter, uh, first. So, Peter, uh, would you like to introduce yourself first and then... And then uh, uh, just present uh, your, your talk, please. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Rodolfo and Vitold for uh, introducing all of that. Uh, I'm Peter Milan. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Jet Group uh, and also the, co uh, the founder and CEO of Transcendent Media Capital. Um, I'm an associate fellow here of the World Academy of Arts and Science, and I'm also on the International Advisory Board for the World Sustainable Development Forum. So, quite deep questions, all three. Um, I would like to start with that. I, um, When we look at the trajectory of thinking, there was a certain time in history where we started to see humankind as separate to nature, that the dialogue was based on our ability to control nature. And it made sense from a survival perspective because nature was something that we were at the effect of. It was the thing that posed a, a threat to our own survival in terms of whether we could eat, whether we could survive certain types of climates and these types of things. But philosophically, you know, when we started getting into Descartes and these types of things, we're looking at really the reductionism of thinking, understanding the complexity that is nature by breaking it down into its parts and pieces. And then coupled with our desire as humankind to control nature or be separate or above it, um, that led to a fragmentation, a fragmentation of our thinking and our understanding about how, how nature as a system, as a complex living system works and our place in it. And so there needs to be a fundamental shift in our education system towards really rethinking um, from a living system perspective, understanding how we are nested as an individual, which is in itself a complex system within other complex systems. And in doing so, start to become comfortable with complexity and we can do so by identifying patterns. So we can understand, and this has been done a lot in biomimicry as well, understanding levels of complexity within nat natural systems by understanding those patterns. We're not taught to think in patterns. We're, thought to, we're taught to think in problems and solutions. And this is the mechanistic style of thinking that infiltrates all of our education that has us maintain this fragmented approach. So when I'm working with corporations, or um, associations, what we do is we work with the leaders and we start turning the frame on its head, moving away from this mechanistic problem solution based thinking into understanding a human being as a complex system that lives within a community or an organization which is itself a complex system that then within works within a system. It could be a financial system or an environmental system or a combination of these, right? And we get to work on all three levels at the same time. 
And we can do this because we have to start with self first. And this is where education is so important. We have to be willing to challenge how we see things, our own separation from nature, our own interpretation of tendency to interpret, interpret things down to basic functions. So an analogy is we can understand how a bicycle works by breaking down into its subsystems of a braking system or a gear system something like that. But we don't really understand a bicycle and the experience of being with a bicycle unless we understand it in its whole. You bring all these subsystems together so you have a working bicycle. We're not taught to think in holes like this. And so when we're working with stakeholders, we need to, in, in service of mitigating the climate crisis, we need to start developing systemic strategies thinking systemically about things. That's how we will accelerate our transformation. At the moment, impact investors are often thinking in terms of sectors or projects, these types of things. They're not looking at integrated systems and how can we be transformative across that system? So when we're talking about reimagining education for co-evolving living, my view is that we really need to reimagine in the context of living systems and then start educating from a really young age our kids and then all the way through to MBAs and into organisations how we work systemically, how we function as a part of a complex system and start really working again with holes in a way that will help us really deepen our understanding and our ability to shift things along a system. And that to me is what regenerative about is about. It's anchored in the potential of the whole. And... We cannot be fundamentally transformative from the mechanistic way of which we're taught to think in our current education system, which has led to a lot of problems of extractive paradigms economically, you know, large inequalities uh, socially, um, until we start thinking uh, systemically in this way. And so I think that it's re been really interesting for me as an employer of a large amount of um, software engineers. Um, and I'm like working with them and I'm asking them, well, when you were learning about systems and systems design, were you taught to identify patterns? And a lot of them will say, no, we weren't. We were taught to break things down into subsystems and deal with the little subsystem over here. They think in terms of ones and zeros, black and white. And so retraining folks to think in pattern identification holes. And this is where arts has a powerful place to play. As a philosophy undergraduate, when I was, before I went into the business world and before I did my MBA, I was taught to think in patterns, in themes, thematic-based concepts. And so we need to introduce this dynamic way of thinking, this more contextual way of thinking into STEM, because then we start to balance out the left brain, right brain capacities and our ability to think more holistically around uh, the challenges, the complexities and the challenges that we face. I hope I've covered all three. <laughs> and uh, if there's anything anybody wants to add, please feel free. Yeah, I think that uh, it's uh, wiser to hear from Ranjani first and then, and then start thinking uh, a, a few questions. Huh? Okay. So uh, please, Ranjani, would you like to introduce yourself and then start start with your presentation. Thank you, Dr. Fierini. Um, I'm Ranjani Ravi, Associate Fellow of the World Academy of Art and Science and Associate Editor of Cadmus Journal, a transdisciplinary journal of WAS. I am also Research Fellow of the Mother Service Society, an educational think tank based in Pondicherry, India. Um, based on my experience of 10 years as associate editor of Cadmus. The articles published in Cadmus are on all sides of the spectrum, ranging from nuclear disarmament to the need for a global referendum, full employment, food security, human security, and achieving the SDGs. So it's like reading the articles has made me realize the transformational shift or change that we envision in one discipline necessitates change across all disciplines and fields. Like a piecemeal approach will no longer work. 
and uh, education may be the primary tool for societal transformation that we envision but without a uh, you know without a redefined multilateral system or democratic governance full democracy people will not even know what their basic rights are so they will not have established their identities for people to establish their identities differentiation i guess is key not difference differentiation the the ability the kind of differentiation that makes one individualistic that leads to individuality not in the sense of individual individualism egoistic individualism but you know the kind of individuality that helps us self actualize and you know uh, this this process individuation or self actualization it only develops when we become conscious of ourselves which i think is the primary goal of education but but are we the question is are we using such a wonderful tool such as education uh in the right manner we are using it more to condition ourselves into thinking we live in separate compartments just like just how peter mentioned so do you see the irony of it all i mean i i would say and i i, I wouldn't say i'm more passionate i would say i'm more responsible than passionate about solving uh, steam problems i feel more socially responsible so to prepare ourselves for the 21st century i think it's mandatory that we leave uh, the remains of the 20th century behind thank you okay thank you uh we do please thank you very much uh, so um, in the previous uh, presentations of peter's peter and uh, aranjani we heard the ideas that are very very critical in that transformation and uh, there were already a few definitions of what uh, art the contribution of art in science um, technology mathematics uh, would be it is not just um finding a new discipline adding to the collection of others but finding the glue the uh, formative force that could really help us in finding patterns in this beautiful universe it is then um finding the individualistic approach not um the part in an ocean a drop in the ocean and the ocean matters only but each drop each element each particle that is a part a constituent part of that complexity in uh, that is in this universe uh, should be discovered um peda also indicated that the patterns the discovery of patterns would might be more important than the uh memorization of all of the components as um a uh, rodolfo often stated the simplistic approach of linear interactions the reductionist approach that uh we suffered now for 300 years um ought to be broken the chains of that approach ought to be uh broken and we have to become free free in the sense as ranjani also mentioned of what martin buba uh, indicated it is not only i that matter and in petar's language i for the purpose of dominion of this universe but i in the relationship to you and his original book was translated into english as i and you <laughs> i prefer the other translation of i and thou seeing um uh, seeing the background behind peta thou has that meaning of um uh, the universe as a one interacting one my fascination with oneness has never left me and um when 
things got so fragmented that I fell lost. I found in that concept oneness as the unifying encouragement to finding the interrelationships. Furthermore, I also found in the previous presentations and Rodolfo's um, uh, lifelong type of contributions to mean also that it is worthwhile to find those patterns. But then the, the large, larger question is why would we need those patterns? For what purpose? Even if we understand or we would become, um, would be led into the domain where that thou would have a meaning, we still um, are in the chains of the natural freedom, not dominion. If we, ch if we free ourselves from that, we are still in the chains of the need for freedom. Um, and then I often remember when I get lost in that area, in that universe, I remember Berlin's also statement that we must shackle, uh, drop the shackles of freedom from and move and evolve into freedom to. So freedom to create that understanding and then becomes an obligation. Mm -hmm. As you also know, many cultures have the concept of tikkum olam. It is the need, the absolute obligation of us to improve within that freedom too, to, to improve those things that led to the much suffering of our brothers and sisters. Uh, but it is again not freedom to make our lives better, but it is the lives of many. So uh, thank you, Peta, and thank you, Ranjani, for your insightful um, door openings into those territories where the new education ought to be, ought to grow and evolve. Um, but it won't evolve by itself. I also, at the beginning, I mentioned we need the Sputnik moment, the transformation that all of us, regardless of languages, regardless of every, all of the differences that Ranjani talked, the diversity of individuals, the diversity of individuals that allows the freedom to also acquire the concept of belonging as one. Later on, I will also talk about the necessity of that belonging. The moment we lose, we not only get lost, but we become useless in that process. Because that complexity that Pera talked about is so extensive, so con convoluted, that we, with our upbringing of reductionist, not only might miss it, but by, might not be capable of that. I will also at the end talk about the uh, interaction of all of those disciplines and how we could evolve into um, models of that would be participants no longer in the first industrial revolution that we were helped by steam, not the steam that we are talking, <laughs> but this, the steam power. And then I will also at the end connect the two, that that yeah. primitive steam can become the enlightening steam, that steam that is beyond the steam of the past. Yeah. That connection becomes then not only the light that passes through the cracks. As you probably know, our Canadian, I'm from, uh, live in Canada, our Canadian poet and singer, um, um, Cohen, um, had that beautiful song, Anthem, in which he says, there's a track, crack, there is a crack in everything. 
and that's how the light gets in. That specific idea, um, we, the steam and of uh, the beyond the other steam may show us the path, may show us the avenues that are not safe by any stretch of imagination, but is essential to reaching that level of patent discovery. Patents within patents within patents. Remember the song also, wheels within wheels within wheels, or all turning, or life. And then all of the wheels are needed. It is not the fifth wheel or the third wheel. We are all needed in that structure if we want to. The Speda talked about the holistic. I also am very much interested in the holarchic. We have abandoned hierarchies, although many of us now leading back to even not only losing democracy, <laughs> but preferring Ducha and the other, uh, uh, other uh, avenues from the past. But I still believe that this approach and the subject which we are discussing will allow us to bring that freedom from to freedom to create, to freedom to create a better world for our grandchildren. Thank you. Thank you, Weedle. Uh, what uh, I come to mind comes to mind uh, immediately is that. Uh, in the past, the process of generalization in thinking, uh, like the searching for patterns in big data, is largely a process of looking for uh, correlation and commonalities, while ignoring facts that distinguish and characteristics that define individuality and uniqueness. So we have to, to go you know to go from this kind of vision that was uh, mastered by uh, statistics to a complementary vision that will be mastered by exact approximations and uh, how can we do that and that's that i think that's the beautiful mission that we have to face in the next years, because uh, I'm pretty sure that there is a way for that. Mm. Can I comment on but, that, Rodolfo? Uh, yes, uh, that's the reason I'm <laughs> putting yeah, this, yeah. this because you, you, on you the raise table. a beautiful you raise a beautiful example because you're talking about AI and big data. So big data is trying to find patterns from a mechanistic perspective. It's just yeah. identifying recurring points. But when you when you're thinking from nature based design. In the context of nature, every participant has its own unique value-adding potential. And this is where I think that what, what you're saying, Rodolfo, and also what Rajani was pointing to, she was talking about self-actualization. But if we stop at the self as like kind of Maslow's hierarchical, then we're already stopped too low because the self-actualization needs to, we are relational creatures right? Mm -hmm. The stopping mm -hmm. of the self sits in relation to how we express our own unique potential, how that gets expressed in relation to the potential of others and the potential of place. And then that brings us to understanding patterns from a powerful context of being, not just function. And the AI example of pattern recognition that you've given is a highly functional relation, like a uh, context for pattern recognition. It, it, it removes, it's, it's void of the context of being first. We have to have our being inform our functional thinking. Yes. And I think it's the being conversation that gets missed when we're talking about education in general. Who are we yes. being in service of our community? Who are we being in service of mitigating the climate change uh, crisis? These types of relational contexts to the self, to the community, and to the wider system. Yeah. Ranjani, you like to add something or is it okay I, I for you? I fully, yeah. yeah. Uh, I would just like to point out that, uh, uh, you know, the World Academy of Art and Science was founded on such a vision. Like uh, 60 years ago, 
you know, the scientists who were behind the Manhattan Project had to shoulder responsibility for the consequences of the development of the atomic bomb. After the bombings, they felt terrible and, uh, you know, they decided they had to do something. And uh, they, the prime, their primary focus was on founding a world university that would address exactly this issue. And, uh, but, but it was just that, you know, they had this perception before. They realized they couldn't do it, uh, create the world university or what they envisioned alone. So they brought everyone together. So it's, they did not call it a world academy of sciences. They called it the world academy of art and science. So it's just that they brought everyone together. Uh, scientists and artists, they all united to create this wonderful organization that we're all part of. Uh, I would say this is perhaps the first international organization that is dedicated to addressing the world's problems. So one discipline cannot do it and uh, uh, one person cannot do it, just as Peter mentioned. Even a self-actualized individual for that matter, he cannot do it. We need you know, an individual that taps the full power, the full energies of the collective. We need a collective individual. And uh, WAS is perhaps the right organization because it is all about a network of networks. It's not just one organization. It wants to tap into each network's potential. So, you know, it addresses the broader spectrum. Uh, and even in Cadmus articles, you will see no single article addresses just one disciplinary issue. We will see five to six issues in, you know, addressed in the same article, all of them interconnected. Thank you, Ranjani. Widow, please. Um, the uh, idea of uh, interaction and creating the individualistic, individualistic approach that is aware of what is beyond us, I, I to we, I to us, and uh, then the comprehension. So it is the semantic uh, understanding, uh, the understanding of the universe as an interacting entity uh, here that we can touch and outside that we cannot. So it is the uncertainty, the knowable un uncertainty, and the uncertainty that goes beyond. Uh, if we could really start teaching about it, we could really have a chance. As Ranjani mentioned in my closing remarks, I will bring one of the founders of um, things that, and, and his views on that specific issue. Um, their response, um, and creating the potential, the possibility of, of fixing things that were somewhat uh, damaged at that time is the similar uh, situation that we are facing. That revolution in, with computers and networking also brought something that has never happened before. So we are now in Sputnik 10, around 10 as I counted, uh, situation. We, uh, the Sputnik 1 provide opportunities, extending our living outside where we could not be, but suddenly we would create new opportunities that we could utilize. Um, this situation now is much more serious because even then, uh, the Sputnik 1 moment we had the concept of the truth until, unless it was designed to be erased. Today, unfortunately, it no longer depends on us. The uh, advent of um, artificial intelligence, even artificial general intelligence that is already in place, goes far beyond uh, correlation or cross-correlations. That specific things goes into the heart of the problem itself. So much so that we have experienced um, the erasure of truth, where truth is equivalent to misinformation, 
is equivalent to false information. And the distinction within our eyes and uh, because of our education of focusing on the eye specialist approach, the depth, narrow depth with ignoring everything else. And even in the model of T type or Sha type of a multiple type of depth and breadth. I think we are our brains are incapable of distinguishing between the different classes of truth. And I do not refer in the philosophical sense. Now I'm referring to the practical sense. The tragedy that we are facing is the erasure between the boundary between truth and falsehood. Our brains have not been and have no chance um, through natural forces of mutations and evolution um, to develop that distinction at, at the moment. We need now new classes of helpers. I uh, have dedicated now my 10 last years into developing digital twins, cognitive digital twins, cognitive that are symbiotic with the environment. And then the latest evolution in that th thought, thought was to include now cultural component, memetic issues. So the comprehension of memes, however, is extremely difficult. And if this is now combined with a situation where truth and untruth are becoming equivalent in, within our logic, suddenly we are facing with a tragic possibility of erasing ourselves um, in, in a, a unintentional fashion. So I think we are facing now a very, very strange set of possibilities. That transformation and development of new insights um, into how we can not only survive, forget about any domination, it's a question of existential. For the last, um, for the last maybe 20 years, I've been calling education as existential. Without that education, we won't exist. And now, 10, 20 years ago, it was not possible. We did not have the networking that is required to uh, erase that boundary. So we are facing with a catastrophe of our existence. If we will not now change, and if for a second, um, I would assume that you and I and all of us sitting in this, in this, in this room would be able to do it, it's also another falsehood. Um, my interest has always been in space, in developing new classes of archi computing architectures. And uh, all of the effort now for the 30 years has gone into developing structures in space. Um, as I will show you, our first satellite um, cannot be, that was the biggest realization, not the joy from building something as complex as that, but the realization that none of us, I alone, could never build that structure. Um, we had uh, researchers from 16 departments in a reasonable university with 70 advisors from around the globe. Any single part of it is like removing our heart from our body. The body could survive for maybe a few minutes, but we are gone, removing a part of our brain. We could see, but we couldn't see. So seeing as one is the next transformation that is needed. If we could succeed in it, we might have a chance of actually reaching the depth of our comprehension of what oneness actually ought to mean. Never ever dominating anything, but living not in peace and harmony. The world will live in peace and harmony <laughs> without us. Exactly. 
Um, we have to live in peace and harmony. The harmony that will create not only goodness and the joy from that realization in us, but transferring, not through our genes, that is not possible, but through our memes, the symbiotic, interactive coexistence to our children, so that they would have a sense how beautiful that could be and would not be dominated by the desire to fight and win, but to co-create exactly. creation. Thank exactly. You. Thank you. Thank you, Widol. And uh, I, I take uh, just uh, your uh, last words uh, just to jump on uh, uh, something that uh, is for me is really valuable, that is uh, that we need to develop an inclusive education helping us to understand who really are, who really we are, and where we want to go, uh, co-creating co our future. And that's uh, uh, something that uh, I like to, to hear from Peter Tu and uh, Ranjani if they like. Peter? Yeah, so my view on that is we need to, uh, in our education system, start building capabilities for us to identify and understand the inherent potential in things, right? Because if we are to create who we are to become in the next evolution, as Vitor was talking about, the next human uh, evolution of consciousness where we're thinking in terms of wholes or oneness or systemic, like whatever language you want to apply to that, then we need to be able to think, uh, move beyond task and function into yeah. identifying potential and then breaking down those interim states from potential to understand how we co-evolve forward together, yes. what's needed in the collective. And those things, I believe, can be taught. Yes. We can learn how to understand our sense of self in the context of a system. We can learn how to identify different states of awareness or being within ourselves and, and within others. We can learn how to... Um, like understand complexity from its patterns in a way that's anchored and grounded in potential and being. Yeah. And so I think as we, as we start rethinking or reimagining how education needs to look, even from our kindergarten years, even from our early childhood states, you know, you. then we start moving towards consciousness. Now, I'm not in that space of early childhood education, but I do work with a lot of youth. My interest is in how do we move business there, right? Because the corporate and investment world has a significant impact and a significant amount of extraction going on that's leading to some of these systemic challenges that we face globally. So my, my energy is focused on that right now. But that doesn't sit in isolation, to the overall education that we need to engage in collectively as a species so that we can actually start co-creating, as Vito was saying, co-designing forward as to who do we need to become as a species, as a collective, as a humanity in order to be value adding to life, all of life in the future, not just our own species, but the whole of life. And then if that's who we need to become, what are those interim states that we need to achieve in moving forward towards that place? And I think that that is that those concepts, that way of thinking, is teachable. Yeah, I I agree completely. And Ranjani, please, you like to add a few words to that or? Sure, thank you, Dr. Fiorini. I completely agree with uh, Peter, but I, I I'm very optimistic. So the good news is everything that we are envisioning is already happening. Like UNESCO just recently uh, published a report that calls for a social contract for education, uh, a contract that depends on interconnectivity, interdependence, everything that this group is calling for, you know, integration with arts. So 
how has this shift come about? I would say it's because of COVID. It has taught us, the pandemic has taught us, we just cannot afford to be irresponsible any longer. I would say it has come to, to teach us the well, I mean, you know, not just the well established fact that we are all connected, but that we need to co-evolve. COVID has come to teach us that, that we need to get together. Uh, so, Madam Irina Bokova yesterday during the inaugural session mentioned this. Uh, she mentioned how STEAM education is necessary and it should become normal in the future. And uh, for, for societal transformation to come about, the study of humanities and arts is mandatory. Yeah, thank you. And uh, thank you. I, I, I would like to, to add uh, a, a few lines, uh, just uh, as uh, the, the final lines uh, to be discussed, if you like, because uh, from your words, uh, I think that uh, the, if we summarize everything in, in the sense that, for instance, just uh, giving you a little example, uh, AI uh, field is so vast and uh, that you can have, uh, you, uh, it, needs, it needs a lot of experience to, to be an expert, to discretize different applications, the, the ones that are applying statistics only from the ones that apply pattern recognition in a deterministic way, from others that apply uh, uh, patterns recognition in a statistical way, giving giving to different results, and and then the point just just a simple example. We don't need uh, uh, I mean we need the statistics, but uh, uh, with the complementation of uh, the deterministic approaches coupled together, if we want to take into consideration uh, um, uh, individuality. I mean, uh, you cannot uh, build a satellite by statistical rules. You can build a satellite by deterministic rules. You know uh, where any any piece uh, has to go if uh, you, if you want the, the whole system working properly. And that's uh, that's something like uh, individuality. You know, uh, there is a, an individual position for each piece to be to be put to have. A, a, a unity that is fully working. And so we have to develop a, a educational ecosystems that are able to inspire students rather than getting through only, you know? And, uh, and I think that the most crucial use of knowledge and thinking and education is to understand that the importance of de developing a good mind and a good art at the same time, going to the core of inner education. So we need art and heart at the same time. Please. Uh, yeah. Perhaps we could really move into uh, some closing things here. So uh, along the lines of mind, hearts, but also the full awareness that it doesn't end up with us when we move on, on the journey there will be others that that idea even of collective intelligence of uh, that we can perceive must be now transforming into the future too it is the uh, multi-dimensional approach to living the coexistence is not now but all all of it it is uh, it's Pedai's language, uh, systemic approach, the uh, holist, uh, holarchic approach, the uh, approaches that we are now aware of, that design that you refer to very often, that leads to the coexistence, must be translated into something that is bigger. So are we ready for it? Uh, have we uh, learned from uh, the erased boundary between truth and not truth, um, anything. Are we uh, getting better day by day, not year by year? This, this is, we no longer have that time. Not, uh, Rodolfo, you and I are probably, we won't have another hundred years. 
uh, around uh, on this ship but it is it is much more i mean the awareness of time and the accelerated time yeah i would like uh, just to hear a few words uh, from uh, from peter uh, first and rajani uh, and then you can go with with your slides if you, slides if you like Ranjani, uh, you know, pointed out in the chat, you know, the the beautiful context of uh, of Apple and Steve Jobs' idea of connecting, um, you know, STEM to arts and liberal arts, and and that in itself is very powerful, right? But then you have this massive uh, global organization that was born of that that are not yet paying their taxes effectively. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so we're, we're talking about, you know, really like taking this kind of concept and education all the way through to the ground, you know, because it's not just about inspiring beautiful technology that captures the hearts and minds of people, but, but what is the impact of what we do across an entire system? You know, if Apple were really living true to that in a very powerful way, all of those wonderful concepts that Jobs brought to, to bear, then they would be looking at their impact across the entire system within which they work. And then they would be, you know, contributing some of their great wealth into the system that needs to then support uh, other types of flows of value within that system, right? So, I think that the challenge for us is to step from the ideological into the very tangible so that we can have this on the ground because there's lots of wonderful, I mean, I have Buddha sitting behind me and I'm very well trained in, 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 in different types of um, ideas of, you know, uh, the aesthetics um, and the esoterics. But uh, ultimately, if we're not able to apply that, what is the value of being a monk on a mountain who reaches attainment and enlightenment if we're not able to practice that in the chaos and the craziness of our everyday life uh, yeah. and, and deal with those challenges that, you know, have us have to breathe deeply, <laughs> you know, or take that into organizations that feel fragmented and, 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 and entirely uh, disconnected, you know. So I'm really interested in how do we take this from concept into really on the ground. Yes. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, the, the road is already traced. It's, uh, it's just up to us to be able to follow and Ranjani, please. Um, I think you've captured it all. I'd just like to conclude with one question that was raised, a profound question that was raised by Dr. Jan Jonathan Granoff yesterday. He asks, have any students been required to study the Universal Declaration of Human Rights as part of their civic studies? Have any students had compulsory civics education to become aware of the duties and rights of citizenship? So it's education is all about cultural, psychological, anthropogenic forces coming together. So we can become aware of ourselves and the world around us. This is education yeah, I, to me. Yes. All life is education. Thank you so much. Yes. What I would like to do is now in my, uh, I, I initially wanted to do it at the beginning, but right now um, I, uh, I, I've been really working on those issues very, for, for many years. All my life was really education oriented and technologically oriented. Um, but the uh, ideas that I would like to say that our old Prussian classroom model that was needed after the first industrial revolutions that have happened over here that were designed to uh, teach many as many people as possible using the same program one fits all for assembly lines is now changing but that related to that one eye specialist in-depth specialist um, the that resulted in isolation me-centric approach dominance approach and linear reductionist approach. The next industrial re revolutions, that is computers and networking um, and information and knowledge revolutions have demanded now 
that we move into breadth, but it's not only one, but many. The reason is that uh, the previous structure was designed to teach uh, for a lifetime. Uh, today, we uh, have many generations, five as of today, five generations at work um, with many jobs uh, evolving. The transformation, the knowledge mm -hmm. tsunami, technology tsunami would be really moving into the need to change the fundamental idea. And that is the picture that I actually wanted to show you, that it is attributed, not necessarily true, but attributed to Einstein that said, the world that we have created uh, is a process of thinking. It cannot be changed without our changes of thinking. I think this session was about it, was about actually forming new thinking forming and putting roots into a new trees to, be, to, to grow in the next and next and next generations. That's my hope. So we need the Sputnik moments, however. The Sputnik moments now that we are no longer Sputnik 1 moment, but 10, where the changes having occurring. And as this is the first satellite that we've built, this required many, many people, 130 uh, people worked on that. Each and every one was needed. That sense of oneness has evolved then. So I would like to thank you also on behalf of uh, uh, Rodolfo and all of us um, for all of your effort and thinking and leading towards the next step. Uh, the Sputnik moment number 10 <laughs> and or 11th or the 20th or 1001st. <laughs> Uh, there are no no limit in that, but would we all know that we need it? The erased boundary between truth and not truth may terminate us. We have to be very very cautious and very uh, and live up to this specific uh, sense. So thank you very much. Thank you, Widow. Uh, I I'd like to hear from Gra Grazina too. A few lines of thought. <laughs> uh, perhaps um, I would like to turn your attention that um, the growing to new knowledge um, and uh, education is not a linear process. Uh, for the years I have been studying strategy um, as a discontinuous process. So it's usually there are some periods uh, with linear developments when we are happy with solutions, but then comes something, a, a sort of disruption uh, that undermines uh, the value of our present thinking and our present patterns of, of behavior. And we have to restart thinking from scratch and um, uh, eliminating, producing uh, what is a ballast uh, and uh, inventing the new future. And uh, this strategy also, this type of strategy also refers to, uh, to education. Uh, so uh, we have to uh, learn uh, from the past, uh, but um, uh, without uh, big sentiments to reject something that does not fit to the new picture. So we should be rather uh, future future oriented. And uh, in terms of education, I think that uh, we are actually at the stage of uh, uh, building or developing uh, a new culture uh, of uh, learning, a new culture of uh, combining um, uh, some um, features uh, of our um, of our uh, cooperation. I mean, uh, uh, those C's, uh, communi new communication uh, uh, patterns, uh, new collaboration or cooperation patterns, new coordinations, and uh, also managing the, the complexity of actions. So actually we are uh, capable of undertaking a huge uh, uh, undertakings uh, the, the, due to our organizational capabilities, due to digital revolution in information. Uh, and uh, uh, all of those big uh, transformations uh, uh, start from, uh, from uh, values. So this is the, the beginning of every process. So uh, just uh, let me uh, give you the example of uh, green and digital transformations that are put together. 
and uh, uh, the, the whole sector uh, of, um, of the greening of industry or um, yeah, of, of this, this type of, of changes starts uh, uh, from some prerequisites and they are values. Uh, and those the values are of the soft or, or the art type of uh, nature. I mean, uh, uh, sensitivity, openness, uh, and uh, those features are being created uh, through the fine arts, not uh, uh, sciences uh, as such that create, you know, of, uh, uh, the brainers uh, who are capable to build some models and so on. But, but here we rather need uh, more sensitivity, openness, and those so, uh, soft uh, uh, features. And uh, those uh, mm, prerequisites uh, enable us uh, to uh, define the goals of the STEAM uh, style. So uh, not uh, with a silo uh, type of, um, of, of goals, uh, but uh, rather integrated uh, from, from those uh, five components. Um, and uh, then we need uh, again to get back to, to the arts that we have already and sciences that we have uh, already uh, to uh, uh, learn before, like um, uh, achieve, um, uh, uh, examining environments in which uh, those uh, goals should be uh, should be uh, uh, delivered. So it means that they are not goals without context. So always those contexts can differ. And we have to be uh, sensitive to those uh, sometimes tiny differences, but between our uh, regions of the world, there, there are huge differences in, uh, in conditions in which those uh, goals can be, <clears throat> can be um, uh, executed. Uh, then uh, we come back to uh, more applied sciences, social sciences that I represent in, in my management. Uh, 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 teaching. Um, uh, so they are different uh, forms of uh, organizing uh, team activities and action learning uh, uh, for uh, the whole team uh, teammates. Uh, um, and all those uh, forms of activities have uh, their prerequisites. So we have to uh, identify in what type of environment we are running our activities and how to adapt not only the structure, but also the processes going on within those uh, structures that we have deliberately um, uh, constructed. Um, and then um, we have to uh, find out what are the uh, what disciplines are being taken into account. So where there is a knowledge, uh, uh, I mean the bricks uh, <laughs> of knowledge that uh, could be used for us uh, as a as a um, uh, as, as a construct uh, for for bigger buildings. Uh, um, then uh, if, we, uh, if we agree that uh, sustainability is a common goal and a huge challenge that uh, should integrate uh, our actions, uh, we have to build common language. And again, there is a whole philosophy about, about being vocabulary, terminology, language uh, that is specific. And sometimes uh, there are some homonyms that uh, the same words mean totally different things in, in, in other uh, courses. So, uh, so common language means uh, that uh, from the cultural point of view, we have to build interfaces. We have to learn from each other <laughs> and to give the same names to the same uh, situations or phenomena. Um, and, but uh, at the same time, um, we could also uh, can identify some contradictions. So it is not the very polite process, uh, lacking conflicts, uh, lacking you know, uh, agreements. Uh, we may have uh, different departure points, uh, different uh, proposals. Uh, so um, the, uh, the, we also need the uh, facilitation uh, process, the whole facilitation process, how to overcome those uh, conflicts, though, uh, those uh, contradictions and how to build uh, something that will be the more homogeneous culture uh, capable of solving those complex uh, problems in difficult uh, um, uh, situations um, um, and uh, uh, delivering the value to all the stakeholders that are much, much broader uh, um, in, um, uh, in, in, in their diversity uh, than previous uh, when we worked uh, with the one, uh, one course of mathematics or, 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 or whatever. And now we need uh, we need more um, uh, to take into account the broader group of stakeholders uh, who should be involved in in this uh, process. So it's much more complex. And um, uh, so I started learning it uh, when we were um, designing the joint executive MBA program with University of Minnesota at Warsaw School of Economics. There were two different worlds at that time. And we had to learn what are the standards, what is the language, <laughs> what values we have to deliver, uh, what uh, what are the cultural differences, uh, uh, how to fit to the 
context of uh, formal regulations, legal regulations of both universities, how to comply to standards <laughs> that are imposed on the, the, the agreements that we participate. So it means that the environment for developing uh, this uh, STEAM type of uh, cooperation and, and, and teaching and learning, because this is a <laughs> two sides um, a, a process, uh, may be very attractive from the point of view of different uh, contacts, different interfaces, different opportunities for, for every player. Uh, and um, the question is, uh, who, uh, who is very fond of such a process, except uh, from those uh, uh, who really like uh, designing uh, such systems? Uh, today, during my classes on project management, I, I ask students uh, how they imagine, you know, the ideal education uh, of, of the project management. And, you know, what was the, the answer? Not about the values, not about uh, those uh, sophisticated uh, constructs uh, that, that we are uh, speaking about. They wanted as much examples as as uh, we can uh, as they can imagine. So they want to see the diversity of the whole picture. They are not interested too much about you know how to get to the results through the well organized process of, of, of project management and going step by step <laughs> uh, um, with overcoming some 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 barriers. They they want to just to see examples. So I think that we have to face uh, in this education, not our very high uh, expectations and, and traditions, but the simplicity that these young people um, actually operate. So uh, they, they are working with pictures, they are uh, working with bytes, uh, and, and they don't want to, to they are playing games uh, permanently. So, so this is their uh, environment, and this is uh, really um, a difficult uh, task for us uh, uh, because they would prefer to, to participate in gamification and not in lecturing, <laughs> not in yes, workshops, yes. Uh, yeah, because I... it is boring. And so they are looking for uh, for excitement. So they are looking for strong emotions. They are looking for fantastic and uh, valuable contacts uh, for, for the future and not necessarily for the knowledge that is getting obsolete very fast. So uh, <laughs> despite of our efforts to, to make uh, progress um, uh, in, in every part of, of, of knowledge, we are, we are actually in investing. Uh, but uh, we have to face, you know, this uh, transition uh, uh, value of knowledge that we are creating sometimes with uh, supported with huge funds and uh, and uh, big brains. Uh, uh, everything is um, temporary uh, here. So we also have to input the time acts in, in this um, reasoning, you know, for how long we are developing this knowledge, uh, for how long we develop, uh, uh, you know, the, the curricula for, uh, for uh, specific uh, courses, how to integrate the courses that are totally from different worlds and differently Rosina. emotionally evaluated uh, by, by, by students. You, yes. you touched so many interesting points. So thank you to everybody. Thank you for your contributions.